Welcome to Community Arts Kitchen. Hello, I am out here in the lovely green woods today because I am looking for bugs and insects for inspiration for my next art project. Now, as I was looking for the creepy crawlies, I was wondering, is there actually a difference between bugs and insects? What do you think? Bugs is a universal accepted term used to describe most creepy crawly creatures we encounter. But not everything we call a bug is truly a bug. Characteristics of a bug, they have straw-shaped mouths, one set of wings, and hardened four wings. Characteristics of insects, they have two sets of wings, sensory antennae, six legs, and a three-part body with a head, an abdomen, and a thorax. I would like to show you how you can make your own jumping bug. What kind of bugs and insects can jump? Here are five kinds of bugs and insects that can jump. Grasshoppers, fleas, springtails, jumping spiders, and click beetles. I am going to walk you through the steps how to create your own imaginary jumping bug. This one here is a combination between an insect and a bug. Let's find out what supplies you need. Supplies needed. Two hair bobby pins, thin cardboard from packaging, masking or duct tape, scissors, small plastic pieces, construction paper or recycled paper from magazines, markers, and a glue stick. Now that you have collected all your materials, you're ready to start your jumping bug project. We're gonna start out with the two hairpins that you um, need for the legs. And we're going to create a shape like this with um, four legs. That's going to be the bouncy part of your um, bug. So how to do that is you need the two pins. And also I have prepared some tape here of um, variety of um, widths. And um, you need a strong tape, kind of like a masking tape or duct tape. And this is a cloth tape, which works really well. So you're gonna start by grabbing onto the ends of the pin and then use your muscle strength and unbend the um, pin like so. And you're gonna do that with both of the pins. And you're going to try to get the angle about the same, the opening the same. Now you're going to pick up a thin piece of tape, turn it upside down so that the sticky part is facing up. And here's the hardest part. Um, you might need some help of an adult to do that. You're putting the legs or the pins, they're going to be legs, crisscross like so, and then you're going to secure them with tape. And as I said, this part can be a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna secure actually to tape onto one first, and then add the other one crisscross on top like that, and just wrap the tape around it so it stays put. Once you've got it kind of going, somehow it's going to stay. Literally, this is the toughest part of how to make the legs. And then once it's um, put together, you can separate the legs however you want to. Once you have the leg structure attached, you are going to create this um, base for the belly of the bug. And you're gonna need a piece of 
thin cardboard. This is um, cardboard from a uh, chapstick packaging. And I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this off. And I'm not gonna need these flat parts, so I'm gonna chop those off. And I think I'm only gonna use um, maybe two inches of this, like that. And I'm going to tape this underneath. This will support the um, belly structure of the bug. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a medium width tape that I have already prepared. And I'm going to um, make a tape roll out of it, meaning making it so that the sticky part is on the outside and put this at the bottom of the cardboard and stick it to the bottom of the bug, like so. And then to secure it from the top, I'm going to put another piece of tape at the top. So you can kind of see how that's already supporting the body. And every once in a while, you're going to have to just adjust those legs. When you're this far, you can really start using your imagination and think about what kind of a bug you want to create. My bug is actually a imaginary bug and it's kind of a mixture between a bug and an insect because it's got the two double wings and um, it's got only um, four legs. So um, that's okay. I am going to now work on the body structure on top and once again I'm going to use part of this uh, cardboard. I kind of like this um, yellow part over here and I'm just going to think about how long, ooh, this cross is going to look like a stinger. So I'm going to cut this into a shape like this. And I think I'm going to use this like the body, like so. So uh, same thing, I'm going to use the uh, tape roll technique. Roll the tape so that the sticky part is on its outside attach it to the bottom of the cardboard and then stick this on top however you would like it and then to support it i am going to just use another strip of tape and fold that around the bottom and i kind of want it to go between the legs like so okay so here's the body it's starting to get more bouncy and secure for the next step you're going to need a, a thin piece of plastic to um, secure the back of the bug to make it um, springy so you can um, choose plastic from an old um, card or here are um, the plastic parts that are around your bread. I think I'm going to use that on this one. And so I am going to just tape this on the bug's back to make that area one more time a little bit more um, stable. And just tie this around its middle. And that gives it kind of a cool um, design that a bug might actually have on its back. Okay, so now the middle is really secure and you can start shaping the legs the way you want. And I thought that at first this is going to be the stinger, but the way this bug is now wanting to sit, looks like I'm gonna make this the head and this the tail because to make it jump, I'm gonna have to press here towards the tail part. So the next steps is to decorate your bug and you can use um, paper from um, magazines. So I'm going to use this uh, cover from The New Yorker which has some really fun um, colors on it. And I am going to just draw with a marker um, 
some wings. And if you draw the wings right along the fold of the magazine, you can do an upper and then the lower wing like this, and then cut them together at the fold. And you don't have to do wings on your bug, but this is just an example of how you might do it. So cut the annoying part away, and then um, cut out the lower and the upper wing like this. All right, open them up. Ta-da, beautiful. Oh, this is gonna look so great and the colors kind of match. Okay, you guessed it. The way we're going to put this on is with a tape loop. Loop-de-loop -loop the tape together so the sticky part is on the outside. Stick it to the back of the wings. Ooh, this is kind of cool. I didn't know that this was in the back of the wings. I'm gonna use that side now. Changed my mind. Artists may change their minds all the time. Doesn't that look awesome? Almost like a moth. And you can um, fold your wings up a little bit. And then of course you can make eyeballs and antennas. This is how I made the eyeballs out of um, paper and cut two thin strips of paper for the antennas. And this is how I attached them on. And this is what this bug looks like on the back. So now we can give it a test drive and see if it works. There you go. It does take a little bit of practice to make your bug jump. Press on its back towards the tail end and let go. Thanks for watching. Community Arts Kitchen was created and developed by Barbara Libby Steinman and Anna Rochester. See you next time.